So, uh, banana slip is safely in the bag. Um, I now want to make another little action, combine three actions uh, to go with banana slip. So here I am back in BV Hacker. Uh, I've got one in here already prepared called Walk to Q and Stop. So let's have a look at that. He walks to Q and stops. So fascinating stuff. We've been here before a couple of times now, so going into warp speed, saving that into back out, having done the crop, importing the armature, resizing it, remapping the bones of my armature uh, onto that, adding the copy location restraint, adjusting the F curve, so the, the location F curve, so that the feet of my character are on the ground, selecting all the bones, having fixed up all of the issues with the feet and so forth, and baking that particular action out uh, and saving it in the action editor for later, uh, resetting everything back to zero. There it is. There he just walks along and stops, so that's cool. Going back into BV Hacker. Here's the second little action I want to combine with the first, the character see something yucky on the ground and start stepping around it. So, of course, reset everything back to, to zero. Import the new uh, arc action. Uh, there he is there. Reset the size or uh, adjust the size. Scale the imported armature. Retarget the bones. Add the copy location. Uh, Adjust the F curve so feet are on the ground. No problem with slip on this one because he's just dancing from side to side, as you can see. See something yucky there. Um, uh, select all the bones. Go into object mode after rearranging everything and baking that action out and uh, in pose mode. So there's the two actions that I've imported. There's a third that I've already had in my library uh, in Blender. Uh, which is the one where he walks away from his step, stop, start. So here's action number one, walk and stop. So he walks up and stops. I'm giving it 10 blend out frames, but there's no point because I'm overlapping step, stop, start here, as you can see, by quite a way. I give that a blend in of 10 frames, so it's the same difference. I'm now readjusting the position of the hip bone on uh, step, stop, start, so that he, his action starts in the correct place and now I've got to do it for the third and final action which was, as you saw there, was called foyer walk two. So uh, having stepped and stopped and started around whatever was on the floor, the character will then walk on, walk off, as we can see here, step, stop, start and walk away. Cool. Uh, bake all that out into a single action, get rid of all the imported rubbish, um, uh, rename this combined action, copy the uh, uh, F-curves across to the um, proxy armature, uh, and then I can bake out the jacket and so forth. I really should have cut this out, but I, it's, it's getting late and I want to get this done. Um, uh, I found a better way to copy the F-curves on, which I'm going to show later. So here we go, saving walk, stop, step, go is what I named it. Walk, stop, step, go. And now I've got two little men in my little library of characters waiting to be set up. First one, banana step, comes along and falls over. Second one, walks along, sees something yucky on the ground, uh, steps around it, and then carries on. So these are the two actions I want to combine into one uh, posable entity, if you like. So I'm going to start by... Uh, playing through until step, stop, start starts stopping and stepping and I'm going to mark that position on the grid floor with the 3D cursor here shift A, empty, I'll just use a circle RX 90 to lay it flat and G and Z just to raise it up off the floor a little bit so it's easier to select select the character, shift select the empty control P and make parent. So now that character, the, the walk, stop, step, go character is parented to that uh, empty uh, and that's the spot at which he starts dancing around. 
So now uh, I need to uh, attach banana slip to that. I'm just going to offset him. What I want, uh, see all this happens at around frame 320, and I want banana slip uh, to come along after step stop start has step stop started. So uh, I'll start him walk, walking at th frame 320, and so the first character walks out of the scene, and the second character comes along and supposedly slips up in whatever it was the first character had seen and stepped around. So just a little bit more of tidying up to do. Um, uh, I've centered the 3D cursor. I'm adding another empty, a cone, Rx minus 90 this time, G and Z to raise it up again so it's visible and easily uh, selectable. Uh, <coughs> I need to move uh, the first character out of the way here, so there he is there. There's banana slip, shift select the empty, control P, uh, parent him to the empty, and now parent the circle empty to the cone empty. So now they're all knitted together in, uh, this is the, the root the root object if you like. So if we move the cone, all of the characters move. In addition, um, let me go back to zero, if I rotate the circle now I can um, uh, rotate that particular character around into any part of the scene. Uh, one last thing to do, just reset that circle to where the character, second character actually falls over. So again I'm marking the grid floor with the 3D cursor just a matter of now G and Y and moving that, or just uh, yeah, G and Y, moving that back. So the center is where the 3D cursor is. And uh, Bob's your uncle, we're away. So we can now, I can now rotate that empty so that character can walk in from any direction. Uh, and I can uh, select the cone empty and move uh, the whole, uh, the whole, little scenario to wherever I needed in the scene. So here I am, I'm just sort of setting up the camera, uh, grabbing the camera empty and, and placing that over the, um, over the circle empty. Here it is, just quickly just positioning it to give you an idea uh, of how it might look in the final scene. So uh, step, stop, start, walks along, steps, stops, starts again and then Banana Slip comes along and goes ass over kite. So, good stuff, that's that done. Now a couple of things I've added as an addendum which is making this particular one a little longer than usual. This one here, as I was working away on these little characters, this option, overwrite current action. I, you know, call me stupid, but I read that and I just assumed that if you chose that option, it would overwrite the current action. But in fact, what it's doing here, I've got the jacket armature, and uh, I decided to bake out the action because I was having endless trouble with the cloth sim. It just kept jiggling and wriggling all over the place. Um, I just assumed checking that option would overwrite all of the actions on the armature that you've got. But in fact, it doesn't. It, it inserts these actions into the actions you've got on the rest of the armature. So that's a hopelessly mislabeled uh, option there. Uh, feel free to use it. It's a fantastic um, uh, ability to have. As I say, the cloth sim was giving me no trouble of uh, no end of trouble. I baked out that action to the jacket armature. So now all of these bones are being um, uh, animated by F curves, which leaves me the problem of setting all of the IK constraint influence uh, sliders back to zero. And I'm just uh, going over here a little uh, Python script I've written, mainly to just uh, encourage anyone out there who doesn't to get into Python. It can really speed up your workflow in all sorts of areas. Here I just need to quickly reset all of the influence sliders on all of these bones that have IK constraints to zero, which leaves it free to um, be animated by the F curve. So there you go, I hit run script and boom, every single one of those bones that has an F IK constraint on it has now had the influence set to zero. 
Uh, and the reason I wanted to bake this action out, I said the jacket just wouldn't settle down, it just jiggled too much. Look at that, it's just like spaghetti if we look at the mesh. He is being a bit active in, as he's waiting in line, but look, it just won't sit still, the bloody thing. So what I did was baked out, and then within the F-curve editor, I can hit Alt-O to smooth the keys. And I'm about to do that in a minute, just setting up the um, thing for all to see. Here we go, and inside the F-curve, Alt and O, and uh, boom, they just settle down. Alt-O, 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 uh, just to get rid of all those damn wriggles and... Um, excessive movement out of the armature. Now when I play it, they sway nicely backwards and forward uh, without that damn jiggling that the cloth sim sometimes gives you. So that was that one. Uh, <coughs> the last little bit I want to just uh, point out here was this issue of, sw of, of copying F-curves across to the proxy armature by the time I was done it. I'd been working on, the, uh, on a Python script to do that. And in the process of that, I renamed the proxy bones to exactly the same names as the um, uh, my actual armature. So the, the, this one's called rig, uh, and the other one's called rig proxy, but otherwise the bones have exactly the same names. And in the process of that, I discovered that I can do all of the copying across in one hit, so long as the bones all have the same name. So, here we go. I've selected all the bones uh, in pose mode. I've reset back to uh, the default pose. Put that key with frame in. Move the, um, all the other ones across 20 frames so I can bake the jacket. And then gone into object mode. You can see copy actions is, is still visible as a button. Now I'm doing the same thing with uh, rig proxy. Select all the bones, put a lock rot scale keyframe in at frame 1. Go back to um, rig in pose mode, copy all of those actions. Go back to rig proxy and paste. Bam! The whole lot are done in one hit. God, I'm glad I found that out. So forget everything else I said about copying across the actions. You can do it in one hit. Now the proxy body is uh, set up and is able to drive the proxy jacket uh, with the cloth sim on it which in turn will drive the action of the um, uh, the jacket armature done so that's it that's basically it if i uh, i'm going to cross any second now to uh, I'm, I'm just i don't know why i'm lingering on this particular shot again i could have cut this out but i uh, can't be buggered so that's the jacket uh, baking and here we are uh, with a quick and dirty and I mean really dirty setup of uh, one two three four five and six and seven and eight characters that I uh, are completely animated uh, and ready to go and place in the actual scene when I'm when I finally get round to doing that. Uh, all on a lazy Sunday afternoon. So that's the power of BVHs. Uh, good luck with it.